A lot of people are going to disagree with this, but ranking Tom Hardy movies after the release of Venom The Last Dance. Now, keep in mind, I am ranking these on the individual movies themselves, not specifically Tom Hardy's performance, although it does have an impact on some of these movies, obviously. In last place is Bronson for me. This is about a man that is sentenced to seven years in prison, but he ends up actually spending about 30 years in prison in solitary confinement, and he has this alter ego that he calls Charles Brunson that kind of just takes over him. Obviously, when you have a plot synopsis like that, the movie's going to be weird and unsettling, but I like all sorts of weird and unsettling movies. This was just not doing it for me. There's something about Tom Hardy's performance as Charles Brunson. I think it's what the movie's asking him to do, but it just comes off very odd in my opinion, just in a way that made the movie simply unenjoyable for me to watch. Like, it wasn't like I was so unsettled or anything. It just was not an enjoyable experience at any second of this. I wasn't particularly blown away by anything. I hate to be that guy, but Venom The Last Dance is a very bad movie, and it comes in at 14th place on this list for me. I'll have a full review on my channel. I'll link it here and at the end if you want to check it out. Here's just a few things that really stand out as a sore thumb in this movie. First of all, there's not enough Venom. The second problem is there's way too many brand new side characters all having their own arc. And yeah, side characters are kind of important in movies for the most part. When you're giving us the final movie of a Venom trilogy, I do not need all these other characters that we've never seen before and are mostly uninteresting to get so much screen time. I just wanted to spend way more time with Eddie and Venom. And also, this movie leans way into the goofy and silliness of these other films, but I feel like the first two Venom movies did it in a way better way and balanced it with some better action scenes and actually a good story. Like the Venom movies taking themselves a little bit seriously and also having funny moments in them is what made them work in my opinion and made them feel so goofy. This film feels like it's artificially just trying to be super silly. It ends up just not being fun to me like the first two Venom movies are and it doesn't help that those two had better villains in my opinion. Speak of the devil though, Venom Let There Be Carnage is still not a good movie. It comes in at 13th for me. The only thing that really makes this better for me is the fact that Carnage is such an amazing villain and again I think he really helps balance out a lot of this because he is giving you a super cartoony tone. This movie simply just has a better plot. It feels like more of a real movie than whatever Venom The Last Dance is. At number 12, I have Legend. Tom Hardy plays twins in this, and this is kind of just your regular run-of-the-mill gangster movie. Honestly, I found this thing to be very forgettable. There's just a million movies that are pretty much doing the exact same thing as this that are way better, honestly. At 11 is Marie Antoinette, and this is why I'm ranking the movies that Tom Hardy's in rather than his performance, because he is literally in this movie for probably like 45 seconds, it feels like. The movie overall isn't bad in any way, shape, or form. The sets and costumes are absolutely beautiful, but I feel like it's a little bit more style over substance. That's kind of Sofia Coppola's style, so I understand it. Just not personally really one for me. At 10 is The Bike Riders. This is the first film on the list I say I really did thoroughly enjoy. I don't think it's amazing by any remarks, but it is actually a very solid takes on this biker gang following them through a very long period of history. And I do think Austin Butler and Tom Hardy are really good in this. I feel like this movie was really close to being a really good film. There's just something that's missing, but I can't quite put my finger on what it is. At 9 is the first Venom movie. This is just a very enjoyable, dumb, fun movie. Again, this is the perfect balance of the silliness, but also taking itself somewhat serious. I think the villain is actually pretty good with Carlton Drake and Riot. Now, I do have to say, I did just rewatch this movie, and I forgot how long it actually takes for Eddie to fully get Venom and us to fully see the Venom form, but once we do, the movie never turns back, and it's just an absolute blast. There's tons of really cool action scenes with Venom, and the first transformation is badass. And again, this movie has Anne in it, which Eddie is obviously he's trying to win her back and get his life back together it gives the movie a driving force that the third one just doesn't have in my opinion at number eight is the revenant i think this is one of the most stunning looking movies i've ever seen in my life it is absolutely gorgeous the cinematography is off the charts and obviously leo and both tom hart are actually really good in this i don't love the movie as much as other people but i do still think it's really good it's really just a super brutal look into these characters i don't think this is the movie leo should have won the oscar for he should have won it like three other times in his career but i'm not mad that he finally got it for this. At number seven is Warrior. It follows these two brothers and them taking their own paths to getting to the MMA and fighting and ultimately fighting each other. I really wasn't expecting this movie to be as emotional as it was, but honestly, towards the end, it was really getting to me. I didn't fully start crying, but it was getting close to tearing up territory, which is really surprising for a movie like this. But I think the relationship between this entire family that obviously has so many different issues that they're all going through is really just portrayed in a beautiful way, and it really makes you connect to each one of them and see where they're all coming from, even though they're all kind of wrong in their own ways too. At number six, I have Locke, which is a movie literally about Tom Hardy driving this car down the highway and it's only focusing on him. There's no other locations. You're just watching him driving this car and talking to people on the phone, which yes, kind of sounds like a disaster recipe for a movie trying to just do some gimmick and it ends up actually just feeling cheap and stupid. But no, Locke actually really pulled me in. The conversations he's going through is just so intriguing. 
If you don't know, the premise of the movie is that he's a married man, he has a family and a job and everything, but a couple months ago he had this one night stand with a woman and now she is giving birth. And even though he really hasn't talked to her since, he feels like it's the right thing to go and be with her. So it's just him dealing with all these different phone calls from his family and his work, watching him just try to keep his life together as he's doing what he feels like he has to. It was really gripping and actually a really great ending in my opinion. Let me know in the comments below your top five favorite Tom Hardy movies because again, he has some absolute bangers and my number five is The Dark Knight Rises. You guys know I am a sucker for this movie. Yes, it is an absolute mess in a lot of ways. Tom Hardy as Bane is absolutely incredible. He is an amazing villain in this. The physicality and just menacing presence he brings to this movie is just another level. Yeah, there's some things that are just straight up messy and clunky and don't work, especially things like the Talia al Ghul reveal. I don't think that's good at all, but it doesn't take away my enjoyment from the rest of this epic movie. At number four, I have Dunkirk. This used to be towards the bottom of my Christopher Nolan ranking. It was literally like my second least favorite Nolan film. I just rewatched it in preparation for this video because I felt like I needed to reevaluate it and it hit me like a truck this time. First of all, the movie is absolutely stunning. I bought the 4K Blu-ray and it's almost all in the IMAX format. This thing is literally gorgeous. And I also just really love how this shows the absolute horrors and tragedy of war surrounding all these different characters going through the same thing in very different ways. And obviously this is the Tom Hardy video so I got to talk about that scene where he just goes down on the beach and stands in front of his burning plane. It is literally one of the best scenes of the entire movie. The score absolutely rips too. This thing is really just close to a masterpiece. I don't know what it was wrong with me the first time I watched it. I could not fully appreciate this somehow. At number three, I have Mad Max Fury Road. This is pretty much adrenaline the movie. This thing does not stop. It might be one of the most well fast paced movies I've ever seen in my life. Literally not a second is wasted of this movie. You're either looking at a gorgeous shot of the wasteland, some insane action. It is just literally pedaled to the metal. I absolutely love Tom Hardy as Mad Max. I think he does a great job as a character and his dynamic with Furiosa in this is incredible. I don't understand how people can watch this and Furiosa and come to the conclusion that Furiosa is the better movie. This is just almost perfectly made, honestly. I do have to say it is a shame that Furiosa did so badly at the box office because if it did well, I think we would have got the Mad Max Wasteland, which would have seen Tom Hardy returning as his character. And I think that would have been incredible to see. So that is a shame. At number two, I have Inception. Listen, this is pretty much the movie that got me into film in general. General. It was my favorite movie ever made for so long and it's still probably in my top 10 to 15 of all time. I still absolutely adore this thing. Christopher Nolan's my favorite director and I've always been interested in dreams and stuff so this movie was literally like the perfect formula to just be a movie that I will love forever. Obviously Tom Hardy doesn't really have a big role in this but honestly I do really like his character in this and his line of dare to dream a little bigger darling where he pulls out like the grenade launcher is just absolutely iconic. And I of course have to mention Hans Zimmer's score. This might be one of the greatest film scores ever created created and the song Time in particular might just be the best song ever created for a movie. I know that sounds crazy, but I think it might be true. I know what you're thinking. What is this guy talking about? He just said Inception is one of his favorite movies ever created and praised this thing like crazy. What could possibly be over Inception as a Tom Hardy movie? Well, actually nothing. I'm including one TV show that he was in is Peaky Blinders. This is an absolute masterpiece of television. Yeah, if you didn't know, he is in the show as Alfie Solomons. He is an absolute blast of a character, has some really good moments and super funny moments too. Peaky Blinders is just simply a masterpiece across the board. It is an amazing drama and thriller. You have Killian Murphy giving you one of the greatest lead actor performances of all time in a TV show. It's simply just peak and one of my favorite things ever created. I cannot wait for the Peaky Blinder movie next year. It's going to be absolutely insane. And like I said before, let me know in the comments below your top five favorite Tom Hardy movies and click above to watch my Venom The Last Dance review on my channel.